Uh, welcome to Thanksgiving Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Campfire Chronicles, episode 18. Happy Thanksgiving. It's the day after the day after Thanksgiving, and we are thankful for lots of things. Chiefly, like, our viewers, <laughs> especially yeah. the ones who go to patreon.com slash <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, we're thankful to them, but we are thankful for also thankful to anybody else. Thankful for these chairs. These chairs are comfortable. These are good chairs, yeah. Was <laughs> we recently talking about what we were thankful for? On an episode, I, th I could have sworn like maybe it was last year. Just I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just as often as we do these, that's probably yeah. about right. <laughs> did we do something some? We didn't do anything like that at Pictured Rocks, right? We at, did. We kind of oh, like had like we fall. Yeah. We had like yeah, fallish fall food, episode. but did we give thanks? Probably. probably. So yeah, Pictured Rocks is gonna be our next full episode. If you guys didn't know, uh, the Whitney one is a lot of people are enjoying that one, and it'll be available very soon. Very soon. Yeah. So are you guys thankful for anything in particular this year? You know, I feel like I always just, it's always a good reminder that I just should be thankful for things that I take for granted. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be one large specific thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm glad that I'm still breathing, that I'm healthy. Like, yeah. <laughs> got regular bowel movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm always thankful for, you know, I look back on all the trips we've done. I'm always thankful for the places that we were able to go to because I know a lot of people who watch our stuff is... They always tell us, you know, oh, I can't get out there anymore, but I love watching your stuff because it makes me feel like I'm there. So it really makes me thankful that I am I can go out there and that I choose to go out there and everything like that, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. No, because it's like um, not everybody gets to do it, so yeah. like I said. Uh, for me, you know, it's funny. This is a real simple one, but just warm showers is lately something I've been super thankful for. <laughs> yeah. And when were, when were we talking about when you said you had a specific pose? For when you're in a warm shower, because I figured out what my pose is. Yeah, see, when when you're in the it's shower, it's this right here. <laughs> I'm just standing there standing like there. this, and then my legs are crossed too, so it's just like as yeah, much. Yeah, I stand there like this, this right, and I, I have my back to the shower, and I stand like this, and then the water, the way you stand that, the water trickles down and like gets every part of you uh, warm. So trickle you're not down cold. effect. See, my, yeah. my water spout is so bad, it, like. If you hit the water right when it comes out, it's nice and hot. But if you go a few feet under, it's so misty that it cools down. Oh. So I have to have it hit my head and then trickle down so it stays warm. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, I gotta be like... <laughs> <laughs> That's why you gotta, like, once the water gets really hot, it like makes it all steamy in the bathroom. So yeah. then it's like, you're less of, less you of you cold. <laughs> I only discovered this this past year, but... Someday, try taking a shower with all the lights off and just turn some candles on and some, like, relaxing new age hippie music <laughs> where was that's I like the equivalent that? of someone taking a bath you know like yeah, they like take a bath of candles and some good music and a glass of wine <laughs> mm, I, I was listening to the giant bombcast and there's a dude on there who's always talking about taking showers in the dark he's like i love taking showers in the dark and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, don't, I don't do complete <laughs> he said like, i love the taking showers in the dark while i dangle upside down from the faucet <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah, we just had a big Thanksgiving celebration. Every year, my mom's side of the family does Thanksgiving where we make that our Christmas. So everybody can do whatever they want on Christmas, but Thanksgiving, we make that our holiday. And one year, you guys started coming, and it was my cousin Danny. He was just like, oh, Brian and Andrew, you guys should come. And then just ever since then, you guys have been coming. Yeah. yeah. I've it's always crazy. felt like this was like the traditional American Thanksgiving that yeah, we yeah. never really had growing up. Actually, yeah, we should talk about what we yeah. used to do because, and I still kind of want to do this some year, but like our parents' friends, like Taiwanese friends, they would have a big potluck. And it was like, it wasn't as much fun because there's like not as many people our age that we're friends with and stuff, but the food was amazing. The food was great, yeah, it yeah. Was, but it was very like Asian inspired. Well, you had like the traditional stuff, all yeah. the traditional dishes, but you also yeah. had Asian dishes. And the turkey was stuffed with like glutinous rice. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it was oh, good wow. stuff, I man. I never had that. Yeah. I just remember when I would go to you guys' house, we used to go to your house all the time for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. And yeah. then I guess once the cousins got old enough, that kind of just like dropped off. But yeah. we would always hide in the basement during those parties. So your parents' friends would all come over and then just all the cousins would be in the basement and would yeah. never go upstairs. <laughs> yeah. So I never got to try the food, consequently. There was <laughs> one Thanksgiving where we had traditional Thanksgiving food. And I remember this because you guys' sister was like maniacal about this gravy. 
somebody made some gravy that was really good and we literally had to physically restrain her <laughs> to keep her from drinking it out of like the the gravy this must thing have been a long time ago because i don't remember thanksgiving celebrations i remember christmas celebrations. that was the only one i can remember and i don't <laughs> know why i remember one time on new year's i was like really sick and i was constrained to my room and you guys kept talking about these like styrofoam cookies and oh I was so yeah. curious what they were yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. it's just those like meringue things now. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you guys have this? Just talking about Christmas makes me think of this. But did you guys have any? I wouldn't say weird, but like these peculiar things that you would do during holidays when you were like littler. Just for example, um, for, when, during Christmas when me and Andrew were like, oh yeah, yeah, really young. Like I was like I don't know twelve, and he was like six or seven or whatever. Um, we have a. You remember the really really big Christmas tree oh, we yeah. had? Yeah. It actually it had like at least like that much space underneath it, and. Um, what me and Andrew would do is we would put a bunch of pillows and blankets underneath it and then we'd just sleep under the Christmas tree for like the ah. next week and we had this tiny little TV and we set up Super Nintendo. I, I very yeah. specifically remember playing Alt Killer Instinct because I got an <laughs> Ultra Combo with Cinder and it was, I was like, oh man, getting Ultra Combo with Cinder is easy, you just match these buttons. <laughs> wow, dude. I vaguely remember that. Yeah. I don't think I ever participated, but I remember yeah. you telling me about it. <laughs> yeah, those were good times. I can't think of anything specific. I do remember one great memory of on New Year's Eve playing Majora's Mask mm -hmm. and almost beating the game. I got to the final boss on New Year's Eve, but I couldn't. Maybe it was Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve, and I couldn't fall asleep because I was thinking about the game and the presents the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one New Year's Eve. This was one of the more, well, not recent, but relatively recent ones. Um, you were playing Shadow of the Colossus on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. And you skipped the countdown because you beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> to watch I game. remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your mom, like, so we were getting really close to the end of the game, and your mom kept coming down, like, five minutes, you guys got to come up. <laughs> Two minutes, you got to come up. And then it was one minute, and she finally, like, forcibly dragged you guys upstairs <laughs> and I was like no I'm not coming <laughs> it was a great New Year's Eve yeah that's one of my favorite games of all time so I still feel like it was worth it I yeah. had one New Year's uh, spent on an airplane and like oh I, really I don't know they must have like determined once we got into a time zone when it was because we were flying across the world um, huh. but the people came out with little brownies for everybody and that's <laughs> awesome yeah. wow one time I used to work at a restaurant and um, I had to oh. work New Year's Eve. And this is what made me quit because I was standing there serving like two people and the countdown happened and we brought free champagne out for all, all the guests, which was like, you know, two, two, a couple and like a family. Yeah. Which I, I was like, why the heck are you even here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we brought champagne out to the couple and they didn't want any. And so we were just standing around the bar drinking the champagne. I was like, man, this is the most depressing thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> and the next day I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I quit. You wow. Know, a, that was at an Applebee's. Yeah. Wow, like, dude. I that didn't want to name drop the restaurant, but sure, oh, go ahead. they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, that is like this quintessential dystopian. Like, yeah, it's probably really what people sad. who work on Thanksgiving feel like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause it's just like, I was standing there. And it, was, it wasn't even the fact that I missed New Year's Eve, but the fact that I was like, like who would ever like, who would want what them? corporate overlord would open uh, well, that's the thing is black friday is no longer friday it's also now thursday evening it's yeah, like, yeah it's like it's, it's like okay when people so are literally celebrating things like black friday and thursday at the very least i understand that at this point it's a huge day for like sales i understand that i don't i don't agree with it but on new year's eve who in their right mind keeps a restaurant open expecting business on new year's eve well the I worked at, that's funny I worked at a restaurant for two weeks and three days I worked there for three days and then I put on my two weeks notice <laughs> <laughs> I worked uh, New Year's Eve and it was busy like crazy like people go out to eat I guess but Applebee's yeah. Yeah. at midnight yeah. that's a little you were at like a higher end restaurant or it was I mean yeah it was a Bravo Bravo's makes kind of more sense because they've yeah. got like, you know, 
actual wine that they yeah, used to yeah, select yeah. from. But like Applebee's is just like, ugh. Yeah, that's ridiculous, dude. Well, you know, at, le at the very least, if you're like going out to eat on one of those holidays, you should like. You should tip well. well yeah, first of all, yeah. tip well. Second of yeah. all, don't treat the workers like your servants. Yeah. Whole, like include them in the celebration, man. It should yeah. be like one of those scenes from Ghost of Christmas Present. Or yeah, past. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that was Come another on, thing. Is when, when we were going out trying to give those customers free champagne, and they didn't want it. I was like, <laughs> man, who are you? Like, <laughs> it's like, do you, you know what time it is? Like, like, you should be making merry with everyone here. You <laughs> they're know, they're still on like the. Gregorian calendar or whatever. Julian calendar. <laughs> Started doing chants and stuff. <laughs> like we don't celebrate these pagan New Years. <laughs> uh, anyways, speaking of which, so we just had Thanksgiving, Christmas coming up, New New Year's. We got any plans? Um, we yeah. I would, camping or other or otherwise. Thomas was saying we should definitely go to Canada and snowshoe somewhere. Oh, that's a great idea. I feel like, like I almost feel like we won't get snow anywhere here this year. But I mean, right now. Why do you think that? Well, it's November 25th, and it's like 65 degrees out. Well, I mean, winter doesn't even start till December 20th. I know, but I mean... <laughs> I, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll get some snow. <laughs> well, we didn't it really snowed the other day here, actually. We didn't get much last year. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I know I mean, we, we got we some. Can, we, got we can always go north no, no, to, yeah, like, that's, Michigan. That's what I was saying. Like, we were yeah. talking about maybe going to, like, somewhere in Michigan yeah. um, to try and get, like, a snowy episode. Up Trail 71 said he got snow already. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. so there's plenty of places. I feel like, like Canada, snowshoeing in Canada sounds great, but I feel like, first of all, that requires a bit more experience and probably a lot of new gear, at least in my case. Snowshoe what is, sure. yeah, what does snowshoeing entail exactly? I mean, it's just like hiking, you just but you're wearing snowshoes. snowshoes to counteract the snow, I guess. Oh. I think like cross-country skiing would involve more preparation and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have to know. But if you're snowshoeing, that, that implies that there's already a lot of snow. A lot yeah, of snow. Be, yeah, yeah. And it's probably pretty well, cold. Thomas was saying, and I actually would love to do this at some point, but he was saying like we should drag sleds behind us with like big canvas tents and stuff. <laughs> oh, dude. That yeah. would be really cool. That though. would be like, really fun. Yeah. Ray wow. Mir style. <laughs> like walk in with this huge thing. Like we could just have one big canvas tent. Yeah. Yeah. One day we are going to make surface. bannock bread in a actual like <laughs> ceramic pot or like a oh, cast, cast iron. iron. Yeah. yeah. It'll be like day three. 0.8 miles hiked. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've decided to live out here. Um, so, but speaking of things coming up, so what we've got is Mount Whitney coming up right. in the very near term. That should be December 1st. Mm -hmm. Right after that, we're going to have the solar eclipse video. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's the solar eclipse trip we took. It's going to be yeah. like a half episode. Yeah, if you're not aware, you'll see what happens in the episode, but it was going to be a full episode, but some stuff happened that changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we've got High Banks video. High Banks Metro Park, we filmed that in Columbus, Ohio, like two years ago. We finally edited it, and now you're writing narration. Yep. And then, uh, we got Pictured right, Rocks. Right after that's Pictured Rocks. It's gonna and be a actually, good one. Actually, somewhere in between there, I will also do the review for the Outdoor Vitals mm -hmm. uh, Down Sleeping Bag, which so just. Out of curiosity, I don't know if you've ever really fully told us, but what is your thoughts on it? Okay, yeah, so I was just about to say oh, that. Yeah. Um, just the cliff notes is, I haven't used that many sleeping bags, but I'm always freezing at night, so I always want the warmest possible. It is the best sleeping bag I've ever used. Okay. Like, it, it's too hot in the summer, like even for me, like even if you just lie on top of it, oh, wow. it traps so much heat that you start sweating at night. But um, it's light, it packs down really well, good quality construction, it's not expensive compared to down sleeping bags, like 170 or 180, mm -hmm. 190. Yeah, it's less than 200, true, yeah. definitely less than 200. And um, <clears throat> it's great. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting one actually, because I like, I like my sleeping bag right now, but I'm looking for something that packs a bit smaller because I've noticed that my sleeping bag, even when I squash it as much as I can, it still takes up a decent chunk. I'm of pretty backpack. sure they actually have another down sleeping bag that's not zero degrees, mm -hmm. that's slightly less Is warm. Is zero? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's lighter and smaller. Oh. So you can yeah, look into that one too. Yeah, I might like to switch to like two of those, one for like super cold weather and oh, then one that's for not lighter a bad weather. Idea, yeah. yeah. Because I'm I'm only using one sleeping bag and it's a 15 degree and I I wanted to just use it as like a catch all for most situations, but mm -hmm. it's just in the hotter weather like when it's going to be bearable, you really don't need that much space and weight taken up by a yeah. 15 degree bag. Well, like when we went to the solar eclipse trip, I didn't even bring my sleeping bag. Yeah. Oh, I could yeah. just, it was so hot that yeah. I knew 
there was very little chance that we would need it. That's probably not the smartest thing to do, like just for preparedness, but if it's one night, it's not gonna kill you. Well, and then um, Uptrail, um, when we were with him at Pictured Rocks, he actually was showing me, it was like a top quilt actually for when you're in a hammock. And it's not, it's sort of like a sleeping bag that's unzipped. Oh, right. So it's got the little pocket at the bottom where your feet, where you stick your feet in, but then you just pull the rest over oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Suck. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to like, <laughs> you don't have to like zip yourself up, which is really nice. Cause one thing I hate about hammocks is fiddling around, trying to get in and out of your sleeping bag when you gotta go to the bathroom or something. Mm, like the last yeah. thing you wanna do is fiddle with the sleeping bag. Yeah, well the, I have actually been using that sleeping bag like a quilt. So there, there's one company called like Enlightened, Equip Enlightened Equipment, I think, and they sell quilts and all sorts of down stuff, but um, they have those type of quilts that you're talking about. Yeah. And they're just like not zipped in the back. So you mm -hmm. just put it on top of you. But you, I've been using that sleeping bag like that. And that actually is really a nice way to sleep because it's warm enough, like the down one's warm enough, it traps all the heat, but it's not, mummifying you like yeah. with a regular sarco mummy <laughs> so you actually have like is sarco mummy around. an actual term or did we just come up no with that's that? it yeah, it yeah, is yeah. okay i can't remember at this point <laughs> yeah which is weird because that's it they could either so say a mummy bag or a sarcophagus <laughs> but sarco mummy maybe we did make it up maybe it is just one or the other maybe we just saw sarcophagus yeah oh, and then we just started saying sarco mummy because i've heard mummy bag too Sarco mummy. Sarco mummy sounds I'm, so much like something we'd make up. I think it does. Yeah, it does, yeah but Sarco mummy is probably the official. I don't know. Head crab one day will be. Head crab TM, right yeah. here. Well, technically, Val did Valve head? Did they know. say head crab well, in the Valve point. games or the Half Life games? We could call it like face crustacean. <laughs> <laughs> face dash. Oh, the... speaking of which, are you can talk about your beard. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get comments on that. You might as yeah, well address no, this it. Yeah, no, this has been growing since October 30th. Well, I shaved it on October 30th. So it's been the 20, like 25 days plus one. So you haven't touched it since then? No. Oh, wow. Then yeah, it has, it's not that long and it's no. kind of surprisingly well-kempt. It's like what, three millimeters? Gross, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. When I grew out my facial hair like two years ago, it was like starting to curl up like the curly Q mustache and like this was just all over the place. But I, I have no cheek. It's weird that you have nothing there. Like, yeah. Cause you're a lot of your- Yeah, I have Caucasian yeah. DNA, they got but there's no- a lot of beardy no... stuff yeah. going on. I can't, I, there was like one time in college, well, there's probably a few times where I actually tried to seriously grow it out just for fun. But, oh man, it, at some point it just bothers me so much. I'm like, yeah. I'm shaving this. No, yeah, it, it kind of starts feeling like you just have grease and food on your face all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, what is that? <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's not a great look for me. But I just was curious what would what would happen after a month. No, yeah. I think it looks cool. If anything, you know, it. November's the the one time where you oh, do it. Oh, so. right. Is that what you did? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I, I totally I think forgot it's that was supposed a thing. to be for like <clears throat> prostate cancer awareness. But I'm just yeah. like, I want to. I mean, that, that's a good cause. But I also just yeah. curious. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a good opportunity. It's for do I look good or bad with a beard awareness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, nope, I don't. Like so Self-awareness. <laughs> so um, this is actually something I was thinking about with Thanksgiving. How come every holiday, well, I mean, it makes sense. Like, can we have holidays where we eat a sane amount of food? Like, is there some way to make that happen? Like, I'd like to make that happen. Like, still have good food, but just make it so that there's not so much food there that I just eat everything and nearly kill myself it, no i don't think it's possible i mean it's it's just at that point it's just self-control right yeah but self-control is like that's like putting like well i'm just saying like because there's a lot of food yeah. there but nobody is literally putting it on your plate or you know putting it in your mouth no no but so, that's it's beyond self-control you know, there that's like my dna the says there's itself, food that, not eating too much has to be integral to the holiday so like ramadan Oh. That's the only way you can do oh, okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But even then, I don't know how much they eat after sundown. I don't know if it's like a huge feast or if it's just a normal amount. But yeah, well, you know. know, like having a feast has always been like yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It's I always love been it. like a celebration type thing. Yeah. You know, ever like all the old show like shows uh, from like the past. Like let's have a feast to celebrate. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it's symbolic. Food in is a such an integral part yeah. to like human society. Like just socializing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I feel like. 
to answer your question, no, you can't have a holiday where there's not a sane amount of food because it's mm. just, it, that's like, it that's goes with it. That's built into our DNA, I bet. Because like someone, you, you're a hunter gatherer, you go out, you hunt that boar, you bring it back and like everyone's around the campfire. Oh yeah, they're happy yeah. and just, celebrating yeah. the it's catch. It's just the fact yeah. that you're eating is the celebration yeah. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I think what I really need to do is like, make sure that two months prior to it, I eat like a perfectly sane amount of food. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly sane food and then once that day hits, then I'll actually be able to handle two days of non-stop you eating. Not doing that, huh? Have you not been eating a normal amount? No, I've been eating a very sane amount of food, but maybe just like. So I, I, don't I know. actually fasted for. I'll, I'll, I'm going to round up and say 36 hours before Thanksgiving. Oh wow! And it's so funny because like during the so I I stopped eating at around like 1 a.m. Wednesday night or Tuesday night slept, got up, and like, I actually normally don't eat until the evening, uh, I mean, part of that is my sleep schedule, <laughs> but anyway, so, it's just like, it was fine up until there, but then later in the night, you start getting really hungry and craving mm -hmm. stuff, Yeah. but as soon as you fall asleep and wake up the next day, all that desire is gone. Yeah, it's weird, it's weird. like, yeah. if I go to sleep really hungry, when I get up in the morning, I'm totally fine, yeah. I mean, I don't even want to eat right away. In fact, yeah. the thing is, for me, if I go to sleep hungry, I can't sleep. Yeah, like I'm sitting that. there lying, my stomach's growling, I'm like thinking about eating next the next day. I'm oh, like, wow. Sometimes can't wait to wake up and eat. <laughs> yeah. We stayed up so late playing Rocket League that I was tired of. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But actually, last year, th this year I kind of was sleep deprived because we stayed up. But last year when I fasted, the morning of Thanksgiving, I felt really, really good. Oh, good. It was so weird. Like, even mentally. Like, yeah. Well, we, I mean, this came up earlier in our talks about fasting, but intermittent fasting is actually really good for your health. Yeah, because it triggers the body's sort of response. Hurt. Yeah, to to basically pull energy from your white fat stores and convert them to brown fat, so that they're easily burned, ready to be burned for energy. So I can understand that fasting, like if you know, you fast at least once a week, actually would be really good for you. Probably make you feel a well, lot see, better. Well, see, like the the thing I've been thinking about a lot lately, just in regards to diet and nutrition, is that. The biggest problem now is that there's no limitations. Mm. You can have any type of food anytime you want. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter who you are, really. Like, unless you are so dirt poor that you don't have money to, like, put a roof over your head, you can go to the store and get 99 cents bread Actually, anytime. Actually, I wouldn't say any type of food. I'd say the worst types of food. The worst types, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. But I mean, yeah. okay, say you're just middle income, normal yeah. income, then you can get any type of food you want anytime you want. Like, fruit. Anywhere from the world, any time of year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's all up to your rational mind to ration. Mm -hmm. And there's, you have to override all of these really strong, like evolutionary adaptations that have been keeping humans alive. Like, you see that thing, you eat it. Like, don't stop eating until it's all gone. Yeah. You know, all those things. But now we can, you have to like limit everything. Actually, uh, makes me think of another thing. Um, oh, but wait, one one thought. Okay. Keep your thought in mind. Yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the the intermittent fasting. That's probably how we developed, right? Because just sometimes there wasn't food, so yeah. you had yeah, to adapt yeah. to be able to not have food. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, I was gonna say was all three of us are very like anti wasting food. Right. And sometimes there's like points where. I'm like eating something and I'm like, oh God, I'm so full, but I will not let this food go to waste. So yeah, I will continue yeah, yeah. eating until I yeah, feel like yeah, crap, yeah. until I finish that because it's like, I can't let it go to waste. I mean, obviously there's times where you can bring it home, yeah, yeah. but there's other times where like, I can't think of any specific times, but yeah, I know I there's, know, there's been- There's not too many times lately that it has happened to me because there's always been an ability to bring it home. Or, I mean, it's just like if you like got a plate of food and you know that if you didn't finish it, someone was probably going to throw it away. Yeah, yeah. Be like. It's like, well, I'm going to finish this. <laughs> well, I got Thanksgiving this. this year, we wrote our names on our plates so that they wouldn't throw it away. <laughs> but they yeah. kept taking them, I feel like. No, mine oh, was saved. I don't know. I yeah. feel like mine kept disappearing, but I don't know if I was supposed to like put them on a specific table or something. <laughs> I would get a plate and then with like something on it and then I'd eat it and then I would go back to get something else and then I'd come back and my plate would be gone. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, slow down. <laughs> so it's my aunt and uncle. They're really good at hosting yeah. uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> so they're, like, good at cleaning it up. Like, they just, like, they see it. They <laughs> take care of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, so intermittent fasting. I've actually, so first I've heard that that's, like, that 
reducing calorie intake or something is one of the known ways to increase lifespan. Oh yeah, no, that's like proven. Oh yeah, guaranteed, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then, which is so funny, but, um, and then I've also read that hunter-gathering people, I mean, I don't know, like, specific cultures or whatever, but they used to have days where they would fast just because they didn't feel like going out and hunting. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we could survive. Yeah. And I'm not hunting like, today. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, d that's a big thing I've been doing lately is I'm really trying to refocus my, or re, turn my normal eating habits into something, a healthy eating habit. Because yeah. oh, okay. you guys know me, I just like will eat anything. Going back to the whole thing about <laughs> like food waste and eating a bunch like, um, it's, it's interesting because I've heard that a lot of cultures who live in like jungles and forests, they like, they just will waste things. I mean, they'll, they'll eat whatever they like. Uh -huh. But like, if they gather stuff and like they're full, and they they just see the forest as this abundant provider, mm, yeah. and so there's no sense of scarcity out there because there's so yeah. much stuff out there. Yeah. You know, th well, it's kind of weird because like the concept of having so many, like the average home has three hundred thousand possessions. Okay. Mm -hmm. People don't even know what's in their house. Like that's something that like has always not. I don't know if it's always. Well, clutter's always bothered, bothered me, but just now, especially in the past few years, having stuff that you don't need or don't use, and it's just excess stuff that you're taking care of, but it's serving no purpose in your life. Mm -hmm. The, I wonder if that has something to do with the scarcity mindset that we've been trained to have as far as food. Mm. Cause I know like, especially in this country, like maybe it was like a depression era mindset that's still rolling over to now. But just like, oh, we got to have enough food. We got to like save all this stuff. We might need it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, food scarcity is actually a myth in a lot. Of, like, it's not that there aren't areas that are food scarce, but on a whole, we produce more than enough food for everybody in the world. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. being able to provide it. Yeah, it's being it. able to distribute it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The stat I shared on Facebook recently from some videos that 40% of food that's produced in the U.S. is never consumed. Is like thrown away. Yeah. And that doesn't, does that even take into account like the food that never reaches the stores and stuff? I don't know. Because there's like, they talk about how on fruit farms and stuff, they just have to like leave perfectly good fruit rotting because it has like a blemish. And yeah. You can't sell it to the market. Yeah. It's all very so silly. Weird. I've actually had people like dumpster dive fruits and vegetables that the store is throwing out. And it's just so weird to me that the like managers or owners of the store will like threaten to call the cops. Yeah. It's like, this is literally something you threw out. Why, what's, who's being harmed? Yeah, no, no it's being... very silly, dude. Well, there's some places that do something good though, like uh, yeah. Panera Bread, the retirement home, or it's not retirement, retirement community center. They get the bagels, the leftover bagels for the next day. So they, <laughs> Seinfeld <laughs> reference. <laughs> no, there's literally a, a bagel reference in Seinfeld. Oh, no, when he starts working, no, when he, yeah, when he starts working at the bagel place, he brings a bag of bagels back to J Jerry oh, and George. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, are these extras? He's like, oh no, these are day olds. We usually give them to the, to the, like the, the home, the retirement home, but they, they pick, they choose, they know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're singing the muffin top one where they get that the stumps yeah, to the homeless too. <laughs> like, They don't want your stumps. <laughs> <laughs> you think the homeless don't need the top of a muffin? <laughs> oh, dude. So, I was, were you guys in the car when I was telling you that social psychology books are my favorite? Uh -uh. Oh, no, I was with Danny and Sam. I was there. Okay, oh, you were there. So, here's a good example of how I was, I tricked myself for the worse. When I used to work in New York, there was a little like cafeteria right at the bottom of where I work. So before work, sometimes I would go in there and I would get their day old donuts. And um, they were like two for 50 cents or two for a dollar or something. And they were always terrible, but I was like, oh, well, it's cheap. And then I finally realized, I was like, wait, a new donut is like 35 cents. And I'm paying 25 cents for a day old donut and it's terrible. Why not just pay 10 cents extra for a good donut? Yeah. That was the end of my story. <laughs> the day you have to like soak in coffee or something. Yeah, like. maybe. But it was just really dumb. Have you guys, um, oh, I wanted to add something to the whole thing about the mindset of not wasting food. There's another thing like that where it's getting the most bang for your buck, kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever guys had to, like, Andrew, you went to college, and I don't know if you had a meal plan when you were in yeah, college. Yeah, uh-huh. So whenever you have like a meal plan and it's like very clearly defined what you can get, 
It's like I always want to eke out as much as I can get because uh, I want the most value. And then I sit down and I'm like, man, I don't need this much food. Yeah. But it's like, now I got to eat it and I still want to get my money. Like I want to get my money's worth, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so you end up eating way more than you need to or something that like that. That same video that had the 40% figure, they were talking about some university that now they put the, po they let you eat as much as you want. That's what the meal plan is. But the portion sizes are predetermined by them. Yeah. So they'll put a plate out with like a little bit of the food and then you can take one plate and then you can eat it. And if you want more, you come back and you have to get it. Yeah. Instead of letting them just yeah, I think say, oh, there's how much I want to eat, you know? Because okay, so it's wasting so much food. There's an Ikea that recently opened up near our house and they have a cafeteria. And the thing I really like about it is the fact that the food there is, it's like, you know, four or $5 for a meal, but the but because it's cheaper, the food portions are more sensible. Yeah. It never looks it's like, like a normal meal. Yeah. yeah. You, you would see it like typically you would see it and you're like, wow, that's not enough food. But the restaurants I usually give you yeah. so much food. It's way more than you ever would need. I think maybe that's, this is just guessing, but maybe that's a European thing too. Yeah. Yeah. So like in Europe, that's known that they don't have the insane portion sizes that we do here. Yeah. So they're like, well, we're not going to change it for the American market. They just do the same. Yeah. I'm guessing. I don't know. The so that, that's one thing I've been trying to do is definitely like really watch my portions because sometimes when you're at home and you just got food laying about, oh yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Just, you're just so ready to eat it. But it's really be much better to just actually kind of visually see how much you're putting on your plate and whatnot see, and then eat that. What I do is I just cook high mass, low calorie foods mm. <laughs> so I can gorge <laughs> myself but still not be overeating. <laughs> so calories, like that's something I just recently started looking into mm -hmm. just out of curiosity. And the so many foods are so deceptive. Like nuts oh, are the biggest one. Yeah. Nuts yeah. are unbelievable, man. Like you have like four nuts, that's like 300 calories. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but like four not nuts is probably 150. Yeah. yeah. And people just eat nuts like just and it's not so much that that's a, uh, like eat as much many nuts as you want. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I mean is just like we have no idea how much food we're actually yeah. consuming. Like the I was reading this book on overeating actually, and they were talking about how people grossly underestimate how much they eat. They say even when they're keeping track of it roughly. Mm -hmm. Like somebody ate like 6,000 calories in a day and it's like, oh yeah, I think I had like 2,500 or so. That's, um, That's funny. more than double, man. Have you guys ever heard the question where it's like, if you could have like one statistic over your head at all times. Oh no, life? I haven't. I death was, ratio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> like, like a halo kill death ratio from a very specific time period. <laughs> you're walking around someone's kill death ratio is one and you're like. <laughs> but anyways, I thought what would be really interesting is if you could have the, the statistic over your head would be literally just your daily calorie intake and if you had that exact accurate statistic at all times how would that change your eating habits because mm. if you knew that like you had, had eaten so far 1500 calories for that day and then you put a cookie in your mouth and it goes whoop, 1600 and you're like oh crap that was 100 calories yeah like like how how much would that, that psychologically would, affect you yeah. i'm sure that would be yeah. an incredible deterrent yeah, yeah. It's, like it's unbelievable like, like so they're putting all the calories in the restaurants like i remember me and thomas were driving back from somewhere i don't even remember where but we stopped at a denny's and just the like it was hard to find something that had less than a thousand calories yeah like, that's like half a day's worth of food yeah no you know absolutely I mean? dude yeah what what is with the all the calories on the menus now is that like just a trend now? Well, I know in Canada it was required because I was talking to my buddy Wyatt and he thought that was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, no, I mean, I get it. You don't want the government interfering, but if it helps people, that's great. No, but even if you believe in like, well, I don't want to get into it, but if you believe in something where it's like a free market thing, then more information is what you would want. Yeah, yeah. I think his problem was that it was mandated. So you had to have it on there. I like it. I, I'm, I think it's a great thing. I, I, yeah. the, the, whether it should be mandated or not, that's, they can debate that if they want to. I don't really care to debate it. The, but yeah, just the knowledge of how much food you're actually eating is... Yeah. It's astounding. But so, so like, is it just a trend that's kind of come over into the U.S. now? Because I, I see it literally every everywhere now. Yeah. I don't know. Not every place has it. I mean, I don't know if it's a trend or not, but yeah. 
I, I have no yeah. idea how it got started. Yeah, because I just noticed like at some point, you know, like every Wendy's, McDonald's, like even the Noodles & Co we went to had calories yeah, listed yeah. on there. So I wonder if it's just like some place started doing it and every place was like, oh, you know, maybe that's a good idea. People will mm. see that our food's healthier than theirs and they'll come here. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But um, I, one thing I've been looking up recently, and you guys can help me figure this out. As far as I understand it, the fundamental, pr fundamental principle of weight gain and weight loss yeah. is how many calories you burn. Calories in, calories out. Calories out. So like, but there are foods that when you eat them, they take calories to digest. Mm -hmm. So like maybe like 200 calories of vegetables takes 40 calories to actually process them. And also them. I think if you're trying to burn fat, certain foods will like burn, like if you eat carbs, those will be used for energy before you use the fat. So it's, if you eat those for energy, it, it'll, whatever exercise you do is slower. Yeah. Okay. Like if you wanted to boil it down to one simple it rule, it's down. calories in, calories out. Then there's, but there's this whole like other thing about like carbs and like glycemic levels Keto and diet. how like like when you eat sugar, you know, glycemic, uh, how it like spikes your blood sugar and, and things like that. But I feel like as if as long as you're following a fairly healthy diet and then you watch your calories, that's really all you need. But okay. also exercise does help because I think it because. Well, that's a whole nother well, thing. Well, here's the question. You guys, I don't know the answer to this. You might know. If you are severely overweight mm -hmm. and you do not eat, mm -hmm. okay, will you survive if you just drink water? I mean, humans can go for a long time without eating. Yeah. That's what fat stores essentially are, is they're designed to provide energy to the body when you can't eat. I um, still think at some point things will start shutting down. But I, I don't, I mean, but regardless of what it is, I don't think it'd be healthy to do that. Like, if you were to lose weight, I wouldn't suggest just not eating. Right. Also, if, if it is a matter of trying to lose weight in that case, I, I don't know if they would survive longer with extra fat or not. But, yeah. but um, they do say that starving yourself for extended periods of time is bad because then your body sort of switches into, like, survival mode. Yeah, and, and it starts burning less energy and less calories. Doesn't it burn muscle, too, or something? Or? It, no, well, no, no, no. It, it would con convert, it, no, I don't th think it's because of that, but... Muscle it doesn't atrophy. burn muscle for a very long time. Yeah, muscle atrophy will result in mu muscle being turned into fat because you're not using the muscle. But there was an analogy from somebody talking about fasting that said uh, burning muscle before you burn your fat is like collecting a bunch of firewood and then burning your furniture. <laughs> it's like, no, you'd use the firewood first, then you would use the furniture if you ran out of firewood. Isn't it funny that we have, I just explained that joke, <laughs> <laughs> completely unnecessarily. <laughs> yeah, the analogy. <laughs> but isn't it funny that we have so much technology, so much science and research, and we still don't really know how to pinpoint human diet? Like yeah. there's so much conflicting information about human diet, what is the best way to lose weight, how, how you lose weight, how the body gains weight. There's so much information out there and like but none of it's like yeah there's no golden rule that yeah. everybody could just follow yeah it's crazy like you could I'm, i guarantee you could say anything about your thoughts on how a diet should work and there will be people out there who disagree with it or say oh, oh yeah well, this and that. it's also a super personal thing people yeah. take it really personally and like they're willing to attack other people yeah. if there's like oh you're wrong it's, it's, it's wrong. true yeah like if you st like on this forum like there was a weight loss thread and people would be like, oh yeah, I'm trying to start losing weight and I'm doing this. And people will literally like insult people if they think their diet is wrong because it's like, it's like don't you know, do you that. You need to learn the right stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, whoa, well, why don't you try like telling them what, you know, it's, it's just. I just feel like it's just eat different food groups and like don't eat processed foods as much as you can. Like, no, no, that is a belief according to people though. People are like, no, 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 that's not necessary at all. You could eat just this one type, blah, blah, blah. Well, it depends what we're talking about. Like if we're talking about purely weight loss, then yeah, you could technically eat No, no, for foods. anything, people would say it. Like there's people who believe everything when it comes to the food stuff. Mm -hmm. well, and they will tell you that. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, what, I do wonder though, if there are people who just like certain groups of people or individuals who just react differently because like, it's got to be, right? I mean, you, you look at the Inuit, and all they eat pretty much is meat. Because they're yeah. just, they live in an Arctic environment, and they're mm -hmm. just constantly eating meat yeah. and fat. And, I mean, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally. Like, so, well, I mean, just like how 
people can gain weight, people can, like I don't gain weight. Like it just doesn't happen. I can eat as much as I want. And I don't know what, what the mechanics are. There's a thing yeah, called I don't ketosis know. where you like, you don't eat any carbs and you do eat fats and like your body goes into some sort of mode where it like has a harder time. Well, yeah. I mean, I eat plenty of carbs these days. So like, that's definitely not my Rob, current. Rob is just like a, he's like the, the, the um, outlier on like a chart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean like my brother, he's, he should have like the same DNA as me, right? Very close. And he gains weight very easily. Yeah. So it's weird. Maybe have a tapeworm. Uh, yeah. I've always wondered about that. People knock the paleo diet, and but I like, and I, I don't think the paleo diet is some golden thing. But I also feel like you can't go wrong with it, right? Unless, no, no, no. What do people do? No, I mean people will come up with arguments. The thing that people have a problem with is the the attitude okay, behind yeah. it. Like, oh, I'm on the paleo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so I funny. eat very clean now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that and the fact that, like, there have been so many diets. Yeah, proposed, that's so true, And too. some have been, and been proven false and this and that. So it's like every time a new diet is proposed, there's going to be some amount of skepticism around because you can never really just say this diet just is the right diet. Just eat some damn vegetables. <laughs> eat your vegetables, eat is. your fruits, <laughs> and just portion control <laughs> Self-control. Well, okay. But self-control, portion control, that's, yes, that's great. I, the, the thing that about the mind, though, is it, the best analogy is it's an elephant and a rider. Mm -hmm. So the, if you've ever seen a rider on an elephant, they have a certain degree of control over the elephant, right? Yeah. And they can click the ears and then like do this, <laughs> and then they smack the butt. And <laughs> but if that elephant sees a chocolate pie and the rider's like, don't do it. They can restrain the elephant for so long before the elephant goes, I don't care, I'm eating that chocolate pie. I was talking to my friend when I was fasting and I was joking about, I was like, oh man, I'm feeling the hunger pains. I'm like, the only thing that can keep me going is my sense of ego and <laughs> telling myself that I'm transcending to a higher realm than, any, than all these other plebeians. <laughs> it's like, sometimes you have to trick that yeah, elephant. You gotta trick that, that elephant, yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta but, appeal to its sense of or ego. Or just like buy an entire cauliflower and grind it up and eat it well that's the thing is one <laughs> the thing i've noticed at least about my habits <laughs> is that if i don't keep the foods in the house like if that i go out and lot, only buy dude. exactly yeah, what yeah. i need then and then i'm good because if i'm walking around i'm super hungry like i open the fridge open the cabinets i don't see anything i'm like well it oh goes well. back to the hunter gatherers it's like well we hunted a deer yesterday do we want to do that today Nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do I want to drive one minute to Kroger? <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, it's uh, just kind of going back to how, like, everybody's got their opinion. A lot of things in life mm -hmm. are, you have to, it's very personal. You have to just take the things that are, that you think are right and then just act on them. Mm -hmm. And lots of times you don't yeah. get to really talk about it unless mm -hmm. you're with people who are like-minded. Because then it'll just be constant arguing about A lot of it is really right. just figuring out what works for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I drink hot water in the morning. And, you, and that works out for you. Nobody else huh? yeah, yeah. in their right mind would do that. <laughs> well, I remember drinking Except people coffee. who drink coffee and tea it's and, just and hot other hot water, water drinkers. It <laughs> 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 worked for me. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll be right back after these messages from Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just found out we had some audio problems. So <laughs> you hopefully were able to hear Andrew well enough. I had nothing <laughs> to contribute. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> too you, much turkey you missed, in the You missed brain. some pretty good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got a topic. Okay, we got 15 minutes. All right, so we're getting off the whole diet subject now. Okay, we're getting back to AA. Alcoholics what? Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> International trip for our next one. Mm -hmm. Where would you guys want to go? Norway. Norway. Wait, don't we? Actually... Any particular reason is just I know. I mean, I've heard your reason of wanting to go to Norway. It's just you, you. I've always wanted to go to Norway for some reason. I don't know why. You just don't know why. I think I saw a picture or something, and then, like, I had a friend's mom's boyfriend who went to Norway, and he was telling me about how amazing it was. And recently, another friend is telling me how amazing it is. Mm -hmm. So, I would love to hike the Great Wall. Oh, know. I'd be down for that too. Oh wait, we we already yeah, have our next. Yeah, I was gonna say, next. don't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. You're so gonna come, right? Yeah. Is she on? Is that what it's called? No, no, no. No, no that's no. the city. That you're, uh, yeah, she. It's called. It's very similar to that. It's Western China. It's like almost Xi on like Xi the Nan. Mongolian border. Xi'an? No, Xi that's what I just said. 
God, what is but it? besides that, I think I would like to do, you know, I've thought a lot about this. I, th I think I want to do New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand yeah. would be cool. We have a buddy who was there for a year, yeah. so he yeah. could tell us. He's in Australia now. Yeah, I think so. You know, <laughs> no, are we, <laughs> are we still, no, I just, my thought process was New Zealand, Australia, would you rather be an Australian outback, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I can't believe they didn't choose Spock. <laughs> oh my God, dude, still can't believe that. You chose Vin Diesel? I chose that you guys would select Vin Oh, okay, Diesel. but what oh. would you have chosen? Spock. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. We gotta talk about this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Thanksgiving, we we're playing this game called Would You Rather. And the two options were have Spock, like the real Spock, not like the, not Leonard, not Nimoy, Leonard Nimoy, but Spock. but Spock, an alien from another world, be your science teacher, or have Vin Diesel be your uh, driver's ed See, teacher. That was, but well, that, let me say one thing. I think that's weird that they said Spock, but they said Vin Diesel because... Because Vin Diesel's a real person. Well, that not, not a character. It make, yeah, it makes me wonder if it was intentional because can you so, like, name Vin Diesel's people? character in Fast and Furious? Oh. I've well, never, I've never seen, seen, it. seen them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But everybody knows who Spock is. Right. But if they had said whatever Vin Diesel's character, they'd have been like, who? Like, who's this? So I think they might have said Vin Diesel just to make it utterly clear you know what, what it was supposed still, to be. Though. But, but even, <laughs> even so, still, though. Either way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. either but, way. So when I was... So, okay, yeah, in the you... game Would You Rather, the person reads a question, yeah. and he tries to, s guess based on the, the question, the on the two situations, he tries to guess what the rest of the group will decide on. And I chose the Vin Diesel one, but this was my reasoning when yeah. I first read it, was that, would you rather have Spock teach you science, you see, teach, you, teach your science class, okay? It was very specific, it said, Spock would be your science teacher in, in, like, in science class, or Vin Diesel would be your driver's ed teacher. And I was thinking, well, if Spock was teaching your science class, like, he would be going on a strict curriculum. Like, I, I just compared it to, like, if I was in a science class and then suddenly my teacher was Spock. He'd have a very strict, he'd have a very specific curriculum to follow. You would have to actually, like, pay attention, study, take exams, and do stuff like that. And basically, the bo it boils down to what you put into the class is what you'd get out of the class. And so I figured, well then, I guess the drive, people would want to do the driver's ed class because you know, you probably it'd probably be a bit more exciting. It's not like taking a regular course at a school. But then you guys brought up the whole thing about like, well, you know, you'd be able to talk to Spock and like ask him questions about that. And I was like, I guess that's that's a rel like a relevant point that I didn't think about. But because I was just you were just like, thinking the class only and like I was just thinking like if that. you had a super intelligent. Um, what do they call that? Them? Must have been like the, the big difference because Vulcans. Vulcan, right? Um, the, oh, that, you literally. That. that must have been the difference is that they were thinking it strictly from a class perspective. Yeah. Like, would you rather take this class or take that class? I'm like, no. Would I rather talk to an alien or a human? An alien. Like, that, I, I don't you, see. Yeah, like you can interact with your teacher after class. Like, yeah, well, it's <laughs> yeah. like, I. I'd fail the class, who cares? Yeah, well, that's that was one of their arguing thing. points. It's yeah, like, oh, yeah. well, you'll I'll, fail. It's like, so? I'll get a zero in the class. What do I care? I get to also, talk you to don't Spock. know that I'll fail. Yeah. <laughs> I might do yeah. well in it. <laughs> that's the whole, th that's the interesting thing, thing about the game is like, how far do you want to push the idea? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the dream one, though. We got, okay, we got to touch on this one. again. All right. Oh, yeah, so I was the question master for this one. No, I, no, I was. No, I was. No, I was. No, I was because I specifically remember saying, oh, I can't argue. No, no, he was the question no, no, no. master. I was absolutely yeah. the question master, yeah. Oh, okay. You were the Vin Diesel question master. I was, yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> oh, I did ask another one that, that was very back and forth, but I can't remember it now. Anyways, so <laughs> what was the dream one again? So it's, would you rather be able to dream whatever you want every night? No, no, or... it wasn't just every night. It was just basically you would have be able to dream whatever you want. Like you would be able to com yeah. completely... Well, yeah, I mean, just whatever you Completely control slept, and dream whatever, whatever you, you want. Or would you rather be able to visit other people's dreams? Yeah. And I was actually on the fence for this. I, I, I was the question master, so I couldn't debate it. But. So actually, what I, what I ended up choosing as the group's choice was pick what you want as a dream. Because I was like, okay, that's like, that seems like the obvious choice. You're basically living out a hollow deck every night. <laughs> yeah. But the only reason I was on the fence is because if you visit someone else's dream, that could actually have real world implications. Okay, you, you say real-world implications. <clears throat> Tell me what these real-world implications are. I'm just saying, like, you could somehow connect with someone on a deeper level, and that could influence how you and them bond in real so life. So, like, Inception. Maybe Inception, but maybe it's just, like, something subtler than that. You, well, you... it was funny because the people... I chose dream whatever you want at night. 
the other people who were talking about visiting other people's dreams are like, yeah, but you could like manipulate them and stuff. And I was like, I don't <laughs> want to manipulate people like that. And like, like, I would only be cool with that if I told them ahead of time, like, yo, I'm going to visit your dream and we're going to explore your psyche together. You down for that? <laughs> then be, that'd be great. But everybody else was all, all excited about having like the upper hand on people and be like, I knew what their <laughs> dreams were. And I'm like, are you a psychopath? <laughs> for me, yeah. And for me, it's just, it just makes sense that you want to be able to dream whatever you want. Because, I mean, if someone asked you, do you want to go to a holodeck and create your own situation, or do you want to go to a holodeck and just go to some situation someone pre-created? I'd be like, I want to go make my own thing. But see, yeah, because, but, like, but they were saying that that was escapism to like, See, I, when I was thinking about night. it, I didn't even go to those that's questions. So like, that you can't say that because if you, if you become addicted to creating your own dreams, what's to stop someone from saying that you become so addicted to invading? Yeah, yeah. Invading? Yeah, I, I call it an invasion okay. too, yeah. What's Invading to stop dreams. you from becoming addicted <laughs> to visiting style. other people's dreams, you know? So here, here's, some, here's how my thought process went when I was trying to decide. Because I was like, on one hand, yeah, it's like a hollow deck. But you wake up from the dream and you're back to reality. But then I thought, but if you can choose every single night, doesn't that itself become a sort of reality? Because so much, so like when it's you're not having like, a, It's not like dreaming, the physical act of dreaming it's, it's not like it's a fake thing, you know? Yeah, no, no it's no, a no, real yeah. thing. Well, the, happening, the yeah. thing that, that always, like, whenever I have a good dream and then I wake up, I'm like, oh, I wish I could, like, go back or have something that I, like, keep something. But in this case, since you can dream whatever you want every night, you could go back to that. Yeah. So that's why I was kind of like, well, in that sense, there you are creating a reality. But on the other hand, I still thought, like, if you are just waking up from that and it's just a dream, nothing in this real world is really affected. But unless you could, like, train yourself matrix style <laughs> yeah <just laughs> but like, that's the thing is you learn control you dreams. can do anything in your dreams you could literally be like like this is a really boring example but you could like study in your dreams mm. it'd be like a hyperbolic time chamber yeah 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 you know? i've but, wanted um, one of those for a long time <laughs> i didn't even think about that but but yeah no but i i guess i was thinking like visiting i, I didn't even go to the whole manipulation people but like <laughs> visiting other people's dreams could actually like because the way I was thinking was like, it's like when you meet someone and you guys have a drink together and then suddenly you're closer. It'd be like that, except in a dream you're visiting someone and you can have some sort of like intimate bond. And then in real life, but suddenly you you're can't closer. Really, you can't know? really, I don't think you can assume that because <clears throat> you know how weird and random dreams can be. Yeah. If you're visiting someone's dream, you don't have control over anything that's going on there. You're basically just spectating and some anything that stuff, you do yeah. in their dream will just be interpreted by them as being one of those random weird things that happens that makes no sense. Yeah. Well, you could let them in on it. You could be like, hey, I visited your dream last night. Well, also, cool, fundamentally, it? I feel like the inner, your mind is like a safe haven. Like that, maybe there will be a time where humans will be able to read each other's thoughts and like that will be no longer a safe haven. But I feel like that's like your last bastion, you know? See, I get that, but I also feel like it's different with dreams because dreams are so non sequitur anyway that it's like, like if you had a dream about a particular person, you can't really be blamed for that. Like yeah. if you had a dream that put someone in a compromising position, it's like, oh yeah. But it's like... Well, it doesn't your... matter, not even, not from like a, I don't want to get in trouble point of view. I just mean, I don't want anybody it just yeah. in on my it thoughts. just seems so invasive when you <laughs> but say I mean it out I, loud, I think that's also kind yeah, of that too, yeah but like that's that's assuming that you don't ask them first like you could it could be a friend and be like yo you want to like just dream together tonight or something like that'd be cool but that in and of itself just limits the potential of it which I think puts it below being able to just dream whatever you want what you need is one guy who can control his dreams and the other guy who can visit <laughs> well, yeah that's what I'm saying exactly. you come yeah. to me I'll, we'll, we'll just we'll play Halo yeah. in my dreams <laughs> man <laughs> Wow. You need you need Vin Diesel to drive you to Spock Science Class. <laughs> <laughs> Take a spaceship. Rock the man, Johnson. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he at some point say Johnson. like Ron Ron the man Johnson? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I think that was good. I think yeah. that was good for an episode. <laughs> you guys have any closing thoughts? I hope my audio turned out. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, because that was actually some pretty good discussion. Yeah. But. If it wasn't that listenable, we apologize. We are brains full of turkey. <laughs> you should leave your comments about your thoughts on the paleo diet, Spock versus Diesel, and dream things. Also, I'm going <laughs> oh, yeah, to throw actually, this yeah. out here, actually. 
if you want, you can also give us a would you rather situation. Ooh. So would you rather this yeah. or this? And we'll, we can debate it on the next episode. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? <laughs> 100 isn't duck sized the, horses. Wait, man. what's the. Isn't that the old yeah. Reddit thing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, how, big, you you know how horrible a horse sized duck would be? Yeah. You just bite your arm off. <laughs> Definitely the 100. I'd, yeah, yeah I'd just be like the, kicking the. There was the one with the. Um, do you want to be chased by like 100 <laughs> roid, uh, sugared up kindergartners? Kid, oh, yeah. Kids yeah. with scissors or. Or dog while you're wearing meat or, shorts. Or run from like 100 dogs wearing meat shorts. I was like, yeah, man, the I, kids. I will ruthlessly kick those kids away from yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> meat shorts just make it really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, debate it out in the comments. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs>